So suppose that we had a system of three equations and three unknowns. And we set up the matrix and we started doing the elementary row operations and we're working it away and we're trying to look at that augmented matrix and, and, uh, and work with it. And suppose we get down in the middle of the question to this augmented matrix. Well, what can we conclude? Well, there's something we can actually conclude immediately if we look at that second row and translate it into what it means in terms of uh, its corresponding equation. I'm thinking of this as being the x, the y, and the z, as always. And so this corresponds, this line, this row, to 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals negative 2, which, if you simplify that, tells me that 0 equals negative 2. Well, that, as you know, is not uh, true. I looked it up in the math handbook last night, and it turns out that's false, which means that, in fact, uh, this is an example of what's called an inconsistent, an inconsistent system. And, in fact, when you have an inconsistent system where you work through, and at every step you're creating something using just the row operations, and you produce something that is known to be false, then in fact you have no solution. So here's an example where there's no solution. When you have all zeros on this side and then a non-zero thing there, you know it's no good. No good. Now, another thing that could happen, so imagine that we're going around solving a system, and this time after we do all the row operations, we get a, um, a matrix, that, an augmented matrix that looks like this. Now notice that last row is all zeros, and that's not a contradiction if you translate. 0x plus 0y plus 0z does equal 0. 0 equals 0, so that's cool. But what that tells me is that this system is dependent. Right? It means that some of the corresponding equations actually depended on the others. They were kind of, once you kind of massage them, they became the same, and that's what we're seeing here, all the same. And this immediately implies that if we have it in triangular form, that in this example, for example, we will have infinitely many solutions. And just to, to remind you of how we'd go about that, what we see, this tells us that the variable z can be thought of as being a free variable. So let me just first of all translate each of these rows into the corresponding equation. x minus 2y plus 0z equals 1, and this is y plus 5z equals 0. And that last one just says 0 equals 0. And notice there's no constraint on z, so we can let z be anything we want. So let's let z be some unknown parameter. I'll call it a. Armed with that, I can now um, back substitute and solve for y here. That tells me that y equals negative 5a. So I plug in a here and then bring that over to the other side. And then if I substitute that into here, I can figure out exactly what um, x should be because I know that x minus 2 times y, which is negative 5a. So negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10a equals 1. And that tells me exactly what, a, what x has to be. x has to be 1 minus 10a. And so we get a solution, and I always write the x first, so 1 minus 10a, comma, the y next, minus 5a, and then finally the z, which is a. And so here we see infinitely many solutions in this example, because I have that row of zeros. It frees up the parameter z, and then I'm allowed to actually use that uh, free variable to figure out y and figure out what x is. So there's an example where you can actually see in action infinitely many solutions, an example of a dependent system. So uh, one final example. Let's just kind of work through on our own. This system, notice it's a system of three equations in four unknowns. So this will either have infinitely many solutions or no solutions. So let's see if we can make progress on this. Um, where, how would I start with this? Um, I kind of like the, the first row, so I'm not going to touch that. Let me just write that down. Before, oh, <laughs> x squared. <laughs> Woo, this is linear. What am I thinking? Holy moly. <laughs> uh, sometimes I entertain myself. OK, so let's just carefully write down, without making too many typos, my entire life story. OK, and now what I'm going to do is I will uh, multiply, 
I will take uh, this uh, row, multiply it by negative 1, and add it to this one. So basically take this row minus that row, and I'll replace that here. So x minus x is 0. 3 minus 2 is just 1y. Negative 3z minus negative 3z is going to be 0. And then um, negative 4w minus negative 4w is 0. Wow, this is awesome. And I see um, 15 minus 10 is 5. So this is really cool, actually. Just that simple uh, little operation right there allowed me to see that y equals 5, which is very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, oh, but you know what I should do? I should probably put this in a matrix form first. Would you like me to do that? I think I'll do that. So let me just finish writing what I have here. I won't do anything else. Because I want to show you that this is really the same thing as creating a matrix if you wanted. It's all the same thing. That's why it doesn't matter. But just for fun, I'll take this now, and I will transform this now into the corresponding augmented matrix. So I'm just going to pluck out the coefficients. 1, 2, negative 3, negative 4, and this constant is going to be 10. And then here, I'm just going to write in the one we just found, which is going to be 0, a 1, a 0, a 0, a 5. Do you see how, in fact, these are equivalent? This is going to be a matrix right here. And this is just merely a system here, but these are kind of representing the same thing. And now, what I'll do here is I'll write down the, the coefficients here, which are going to be 2, 2, negative 6, negative 8 and 10. And it's an augmented matrix, so I put little dots over here. Whoop. That represents these are the constant sides and these are the variables. X, Y, Z, W. Excellent. Okay, so now how would we simplify this a little more? Well, I'm going to simplify by replacing that third row by negative 2 times the first one plus the third one. So I'll keep everything else the same. 1, 2, negative 3, negative 4, 10. 0, 1, 0, 0, 5. And then negative 2, I'll, don't tell anyone I'm doing this. And then we'll add it to this. So it's negative 2, and 2 is 0. Uh, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Uh, this is 6 plus negative 6 is 0. This is going to be 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Boy, I'm liking all that. And then here I see negative 20 plus 10 is negative 10. So that's my new augmented matrix. And now we can uh, actually notice that if I were to um, divide this uh, uh, a row, by negative 2, it actually, notice, is going to become a, the previous row. So I'm going to do a couple things here at once. Check this out. Tell me if you like this or not. I'm going to first copy the beginning. I'm going to keep the next thing. And now I want you to imagine taking this row and multiplying it through by, in fact, let's just multiply it through by, um, by a half. Then this becomes a negative 1, and this becomes a negative 5. If I take that and now add it to this one, what's going to happen? I'm going to get 0, and this is negative 1, and 1 is 0. 0, 0, and negative 5, and 5 is 0. Check it out. So I have this now in this triangular form where I see now an entire row of zeros. That tells me that there's lots of stuff going on here. So let's figure out what we know. Okay? So now we made this as simple as we can. Let's take a look at this and reflect. What do I have? Well, what I know, first of all, is that second line is really informative. If I translate that into the corresponding equation, I see 0x plus 1y plus 0z plus 0w equals 5. It just says that y equals 5. How awesome is that? I know exactly what y equals. y equals 5. Cool. And this tells me I can figure out what x is in terms of y and w uh, and, and z and w. But this equation down here just says 0 equals 0, which means there are no other constraints on z 
and there are no other constraints on w. So we have two free variables, a z and a w variable. And they could be anything, and they don't have to be the same thing. They could be anything at all. So in fact, here I have two free parameters, and I should give them names. So let me actually call the z parameter a. Whoops, I need the right, the right color. So the z parameter, I'm going to call this a. And a is just anything at all we want it to be. And then the w parameter, I'm going to call some other free variable. I'll call it b. Now, armed with that y has to equal 5, and z could be anything, calling it a, and w could be anything, call it b, this uh, first row actually tells me that x is dependent on, on these things. And how so? Well, if we translate this, this says that x plus 2y minus 3z minus 4w equals 10. And if I insert what we know, what do we see? I see that x plus 2 times 5, which is 10, minus 3 times z, which is a, so minus 3a, minus 4 times w, which we're calling b, equals 10. If I subtract 10 from both sides, notice that they drop out. And if I add 3a to both sides and 4b to both sides, I see that x equals 3a plus 4b. And so that's the value for x given the value for uh, z and w being a and b. So what that means is I now see what x equals. x is going to equal 3a plus 4b. And so the solution can be written as an ordered, in this case, uh, quartuple. 3a plus 4b, that's x. Then I write y, that's the number 5. Then I write the z, which is a, and then I write the w, which is b. And that is the answer. So there are infinitely many solutions. Do you see it? Just pick a value for a, anything you want, it's free. Pick a value for b, anything you want, it's free. The y will always be 5, but once you have the a and the b, that will determine the x. And if you plug in these four values, 3a plus 4b, 5a, and b, for x, y, z, w, into the original equation, you will see in any one of these three equations that, in fact, the identity will hold. So this actually works out. So here's an example where we have infinitely many solutions. And we found it by writing the corresponding augmented matrix that goes with the system, and then doing the elementary row operations to the matrix, putting it in a triangular type form, and then all of a sudden realizing what variables are, can be thought of as free, and using the, those, see which variables are dependent on the free variables, and solving away, there you have it. Really amazing that, in fact, we can take a look at really complicated systems of linear equations, really, really lots of variables. And just by following a process, looking for that pattern, and slowly going through some of the arithmetic, we can actually say something definitively about this very complex system. These systems occur all the time in nature, all the time in economics, all over the world, literally all the time. Everything is modeled by big systems of, of equations put together. When they're linear, we now know what to do. Enjoy thinking about the linear systems in your life, and I'll see you soon.